Everyone knows you've got to be tough to play footy. All those big hits and crunching tackles, they're an important part of the game. And let's be honest, a huge part of the entertainment as well. If you're out on the field, chances are you will get hurt. We're only just now, though, finding out how badly. New research claims that constant tackling can injure the brain for life. And the damage starts with that very first knock in that very first game back as a kid. On a rainy Friday night, Nicole Doyle is watching her 11-year-old son, Aaron, play footy. Come on, Aaron! He loves it, and she loves to cheer him on. There he goes. Yeah. But like thousands of mums across the country, she feels every hit, every tackle. How are you? Is he? You're watching? He's up. He's up. You're OK? Yeah. <laughs> when you see him get hit, when you see him get tackled, how do you feel? Well, it's seconds. I, I'm waiting, I'm waiting till he gets up, and then I'm all right. I mean, what's your worst fear? What's the worst thing that can happen to your son? That he's going to get a brain injury. Mm. Yeah. Here we go, underway, BB Friday Night Footy. And it's a fear that's justified. And straight away with Ray Cashmere. He's not Aaron there. is just one of a million Australians who strap on the boots and hit the field every weekend. Oh, oh yeah, he's in trouble. He's to play Aussie rules, rugby league. Oh! oh. Well, he's gone down the 10, Joel Clinton. Union. Oh, that is a malicious tackle. Or soccer. It's Kale is tracked down. But according to the latest international research... And it's on his back. The cumulative effect of repeated knocks to the head can cause devastating brain damage. And he's pole-axed. <laughs> you think about broken arms or broken legs, but never, ever dreamt of... Well, I just didn't enter my head then. Brain injury. Here's your boys. Here they are. Margaret Russell had the usual concerns when her son Michael wanted to play rugby league. Here we go. Oh, go, go. There you go. <laughs> but she couldn't have imagined the game they both loved could leave her son permanently brain damaged. How, how tough is it watching them out there playing? Michael was a champion junior player from the age of seven. At 21, he suffered a bad concussion in a rough tackle, but after tests, was soon back on the paddock. It was to be the last game he ever played. He was running with the ball, he just got a try, come back, had the ball again, they set him up, big Maori guy, boom, big hit. It wasn't a tackle, it was just a big hit. A hit big enough to cause a brain bleed. Suddenly, Margaret's strapping young son was so close to death, even his doctors offered no hope. The next thing I sort of remember was this doctor coming into a room, said, uh, quick, come up and say goodbye to him because he's going to die. It's plain as simple as that. And it, it was just unbelievable. Here's this young man lying there that was not a mark on him, nothing that you could see. Somehow, Michael survived, but he's well aware of what he's lost. Michael, how do you describe what happened to your brain? Well, I thought it was a Mercedes Benz. After my tackle was accident, I would have been classed as a best-up VW. <laughs> And in a big situation, you drive to try to score. Set. Well, I'll tell you, the last Half a world away here in America, cases like Michael's have prompted the world's top researchers to begin measuring the real damage football does to the brain. What they've discovered is groundbreaking and worrying. In fact, it's already started to change the way the game is played here. And it'll surprise anyone of any age who's about to lace up the footy boots. So we can't be in denial about it. No, it would be great if we could, if we, because we all love football, we all love sports, but I think we can't uh, uh, ethically ignore this anymore. This is the actual brain of a former American football player, one of thousands Dr. Anne McKee has examined in her groundbreaking research. And with each slice, she finds more damage all caused by repeated blows to the head and being knocked unconscious during a game of footy. 
how bad is it? I mean, how bad does the disease become? Well, if, if a person lives long enough, they become institutionalized with, with very severe dementia. And it looks very similar to an Alzheimer patient or some other dementing uh, condition. So it's very, very severe. This is what we're talking about. It's a real human brain. Now, just touching it and feeling it, believe me, it's a surreal experience. But it gives you a very good understanding of just how delicate, how fragile this thing is. Now, when the head's knocked, the brain changes shape. It moves backwards and forwards, really violently, bashing the skull. Tissues are torn and there's concussion. It can all happen that quickly and that easily. And two very good ones on the outside. They have a lot of guys in coverage. And Dr. McKee has revealed even a single blow like that can begin a slow spread of degenerative damage across the brain. How about that collision? An insidious, undetectable condition that only reveals itself in an autopsy. Who has two? Because they both well, on the very left uh, panel is, a no is the brain of a normal person. In the middle panel is uh, a 45-year-old football player who um, developed memory problems and some behavior problems. And you can see just tremendous deposits of this brown pigment. Bottom line is brown is bad. Brown is bad, right. Mm. And you can't imagine a brain with this much damage functioning in anything close to a normal way. That brown cloud is the creeping killer, a protein called tau. We all have it, but head trauma can mutate the protein and cause it to attack the part of the brain that controls our behaviour. There he is. OK, your dad's the far left. Did he four? Yeah. 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 Is that side of the screen, do you see him? <laughs> you see him, Don't Matt? Cry. I'm not crying. Yeah, you, oh, my God, yeah, you uh, are. Sure. It was changes in her husband Tom's behaviour that Lisa McHale first noticed. This was during playing days. He looked good. After retirement, the former American football star transformed from a loving family man. Baseball game, and this actually was the last picture that was ever taken of Tom. The last one. To a depressed drug user. That's a treasured photo. When I look back at the time frame, I can say that by 2005, I recall very vividly, say, thinking to myself there's something very wrong with my husband. I mean, I don't know, how do you describe it? It's like a shell, like he looks like Tom and he, some, and he sounds like Tom, but it isn't Tom. Um, like he's not, really, he's, he's not really in there. In 2008, completely off the rails, he died from an accidental overdose. Looking for answers, Lisa donated his brain to Dr. McKee's research. And what they found was that years of heavy hits had scarred his brain and caused the violent shift in his behaviour. Probably the first thing that went through my mind that, my God, Tom, this is what it was. This is why you were feeling the way you were feeling. And nobody had any idea. Nobody had any idea. Well, what we're seeing in the football players is, first of all, they're dying at a young age. The average age of death is around age 50, which is obviously far too young. Uh, they have a lot of behavioral problems, which include irritability and assaultive behavior, uh, irrationality. Uh, there have been drug and substance abusers in these football players. So uh, their life tends to spiral downhill. It's, it's, it's not a pretty thing. Back on Sydney's northern beaches, that's a scary prospect for Mum Nicole and her 11-year-old son Aaron. So the brain, it moves inside the skull and, you know, a couple of those, surely it's not going to be good. Why do you let him play? Because he loves it. He's, yeah. he's a boy. You've got to let him be. You've got to let him grow. Yeah. yeah. Can we win this? Yeah! The research is a long way from being tested here. But former players like NRL legend Tommy Radonikus believe our codes are vastly different to American gridirons. Halfback, where's the little halfback? They should be in the helmet, be in that big thing they put on their head. Like that, they, that, that's what they wear in car races, don't they, or when they go to the moon. And why they get all those injuries and why they're getting this brain damage? Because they run, they, they run like a dive bomber with their head first. Let's go, one. Here in suburban Brisbane, it's all about tackling safely and avoiding head contact. Good tackle. Throughout my career, not once did I hear of anybody suffering 
like, you know, a brain damage or Alzheimer's or whatever, you know, because I'm not going around uh, <laughs> twittering like a bird or something like that. No, no, no. You certainly haven't got Alzheimer's. No, I haven't, no, not at this stage anyway, no. But there's time and slate up. But all codes are well aware of the dangers and have enforced strict safety standards when it comes to head injuries. Just leave him, boys. Just leave him. Just leave him. And if you hit fire... Right here, the big red button. Yep. This may well be the next step. So now when two players get impacted, here we go. Yeah. Ooh, there we go, bang. there's a hit. Now the information is being that. translated over to the sideline. So it's going Richard Greenwell is now. showing me the hit system. And all of a sudden, collision occurs. A way to monitor each on-field crunch. Just put the sensor in the helmet, put the helmet on and go play their sport. The level of impact is recorded by helmet. sensors fitted to helmets and easily adapted to suit other sporting headgear. Your car has many sensors that trigger the airbags and this is basically the same sensor and every time you decelerate or accelerate the head over a certain level we trigger the data collection and record the information from that type of impact. If the hit's too hard, they sit out. No argument. Are you going to scare kids off playing hard football going for the big tackle? We sure hope not. We, we hope exactly the opposite, um, that they can learn how to tackle properly and tackle effectively and efficiently while sparing themselves uh, the potential for an injury. I have an eight-year-old son who's about to start playing contact rugby union. Yeah. Is that too young? I think it is. I think it is. The, the dangers are, are just too great. We love our kids and we want to watch them play and we want to live vicariously through them, but we just cannot be setting them up for, for injury as they grow older. Goodbye. But football is here to stay and we wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs> what this new knowledge can do um, is make the game safer. Might get you to butter some rolls, eh? And prevent the kind of sporting tragedies we've seen in the past. Michael, what do you say to the young players today? Do you have any advice for them? Yeah, listen to your kids, listen to your mums, listen to your dads. And don't be a hero. You never know what could happen to you. How much of a difference would it have made if police acted on his phone calls? Big difference. A new witness speaks. He took off the mask. It was Christian B. Christian B. Will the truth about Maddie McCann? He said she didn't scream. Finally be revealed. The evidence we have, there's no doubt.